do you know why people faint people faint because of the consistent battles provided you are alive and you live in a world like ours today there are many things that sap your energy emotionally you may be a parent and just when you're trying to manage the issue of no salary no payment your children just come with a PTA letter to let you know that the school fees has been increased those who become are those who never settle they know that there is always a better and greater version it was Isaiah I believe chapter 40 speaking about the renewal of strength it says has thou not heard has thou not known the everlasting God the Lord is that true that there is no he does not get weary there is no searching of his understanding and then he says even the young men will be weary the youth he says he does not faint neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding verse 29 he giveth power to the faint somebody say power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength do you know why people faint people faint because of the consistent battles provided you are alive and you live in a world like ours today there are many things that sap your energy emotionally you may be a parent and just when you're trying to manage the issue of no salary no payment your children just come with a PTA letter to let you know that the school fees has been increased by 50% and chances are excellent that you can become emotionally fatigued it's true the bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine it says but a broken spirit can dry up the bones i receive text messages emails from people complaining and you hear them say i am tired i am tired is a psychological way of saying i'm about to give up what do you think leads men to you know it used to be something that people laugh at africans laugh at people and say these white guys themselves but you see that spirit patiently crept his way into africa and right now someone just strolls around as if he's going to the market and the next thing they pick his body somewhere with a letter i am tired of life i forbid that over your life and i forbid that over your children there's a very particular psychological case that I've observed that is on the increase and on the rise right now. They call it mental health. Mental, what they call it? Mental, mental disorder, huh? not direct madness, but mental health. This, especially among teenagers, there is a spirit that has just trapped that demography and is destroying those people. You will see a young boy misbehaving and you will think he's just being nasty and naughty until he does something to hurt himself or herself god is able to increase strength it used to be an embarrassment for men to cry those days no matter what it is they say be a man be a man means let me not see tears from your eyes but it's amazing how men cry like children now they say listen you better join me to cry because sooner or later we will all cry the reality that is before us now hmm. The concept of being a man has become obsolete because the vicissitudes of life have beat down even the strongest of men to become like children. After all, Jesus wept. That is comforting for someone who has been crying. The balance is that he did not weep forever. The Bible already says, weep not. Weep not. The current speakings of God is that you weep not because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and he is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls. And for someone who came here weeping, God has given us a beautiful handkerchief to wipe those tears forever. But I submit to you that men and women alike can become overwhelmed by the situations of life, rent issue plus health issue plus causes plus the wickedness of men are we together plus all kinds of prejudices that come with this life can equal breakdowns of any sort and sometimes even if you are Jesus you may be overwhelmed and find yourself crying strength how about revival 
there are people who are saying i'm i'm not here for healing my spiritual life has gone as low as it can get prayer zero fasting zero word study zero commitment towards spiritual things zero passion for the house of god zero love for the brethren zero you are in desperate need for revival what does it mean to revive to revive means to bring back to a position of stature stability and vitality transformation there are many believers who are in need desperate need for transformation transformation it was is what sponsors becoming christ-like there are many people who are saved and it's only because you saw them come to the front here there's no other evidence in their lives that they've met jesus every other thing looks like satan you are in need of transformation the bible says to not be conformed to this world but to be renewed be transformed by the renewing of your mind are we still together that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god prosperity there are people who are here and they are not hiding it there's nothing to hide they are here simply because they are tired of financial problems it's as simple as that and do not feel embarrassed that you came here because of that where else would you come for help did the bible not say that he will send you help from his sanctuary the house of god is a place of help many people laugh at the church in sarcasm and say the church cannot help people even economically after all what do preachers know when you have financial problems you need some kind of economic intelligent perspectives it may not be true not every man of god is dull god is helping all of us but there are people who have opened up themselves to the whole counsel of god make no mistakes to think that the church cannot help people to be empowered economically with the dignity of kingdom integrity the house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. Are we together? And like you would be learning, there is always a prophetic advantage to wealth that the world cannot give you. Yes. Wealth, I taught you last week, so do not forget the reward system of the kingdom. I have taught you series upon series on finances. We have one scheduled for this year, and I will continue to teach. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to be empowered financially, sustainably. Do not embrace value and intellectual approach to finances alone. The world is wicked. There are spirits. They don't care how economically sound you are. Samaria, I believe, had people who were economically sound, but famine still came. The world is going through the formation of another, another kind of financial tragedy that we hope does not bring people to their knees again. Every once in a while it happens, it's a circle. But the people that do know their God, the Bible says they shall be strong, capacity, and they shall do exploits. It says, thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Are we together? God can prosper men. God can prosper men. There is a kingdom's way of prosperity. This is not what I'm teaching. I'm just showing you the major needs of people. And I'd be lying, we both will be lying to not admit that it is one of the major issues that has brought people right now. Most people are already standing at the corridors of compromise simply because of financial limitations school fees house rent monies for expenditures and all kinds of things i think it is insensitive of a man of god to ignore these things in light of the current happenings in our world i consider it quite insensitive any true leader any true shepherd that loves his people must be able to make his contribution as far as empowering the people economically is concerned and the key is light both spiritual prophetic and economic intelligence is what needs to weave themselves together 
to get you completely out of poverty but let me tell you getting out of poverty as an experience is a reality and your whole lifetime does not have to be invested to make that project happen if you follow God's way it is the way of wisdom Many people arrogantly would not listen to the counsel of God and continue to dabble across paths that only repeat pain. Like many of you have refused to listen to God. I know what I need to do. I studied economics. I'm not insulting your pedigree. But we're talking of higher spiritual laws that produce results that can be proven here and now. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He says, do not let them depart from out of their mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The Bible then says they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them and health to their flesh. You're not empowered economically. You will live a sad life, an angry one for that matter. It will now extend to jealousy, anger and all the negative attributes that come with lack and let me tell you it is not the will of God to be and to live in poverty let me repeat it again for your hearing and to strengthen your conviction it is not the will of God regardless what the economic situation is right now you must first believe that there is a way out of this for me not by playing pranks and crooks and by demonic manipulation and some of these negative things with the dignity of kingdom integrity you can rise and can i tell you you can rise on time god gives men speed so that they can serve his purposes he told pharaoh let my people go that they may go and serve me when he tells that financial pharaoh to let you go is so that you can have the liberty to serve him Financial resources help you to serve God in truth and to serve him properly. You can become a blessing to people. If you are healed, you are healed for yourself. But you see, when God prospers you, you can become an extension of his love to all and sundry. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. The meaning of that is that every financial pharaoh that has trapped you, for as long as you have found yourself here tonight in the name that is above all names and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, financial shame and embarrassment must give way from your life. Yeah.